Well, our editing, our edit bay in the middle of nowhere was next to a Domino's. So, but we, we started limiting our cheesy bread orders to only twice a week. <laughs> because at one point, because they would deliver you some cheesy bread. Yeah. Pizza and, uh -huh. and the cheesy, cheesy bread. bread. <laughs> and I said, Spence, you know, I can't do this, you know, it's getting... Yeah, just sitting, <laughs> sitting in the just, dark, it was, right. like, it was like two times a week. I said, okay. Wow. So, sometime we get that through it on Monday and Tuesday. And we'd be like, no more cheesy bread till next Monday. Sometimes we spread it out. But yeah, you eat really poorly. In the bigger movies, in bigger films, I just found this out maybe about, I don't know, six months ago in larger films, they cater. A pride swallowing we'll siege. A horrible <laughs> time. I hate it. Hate writing. Yeah. I hate writing. <laughs> <laughs> I really don't like it. Some people love it. Some people really love the screenwriting process, mm -hmm. hate the editing process. Some people love to shoot, don't want to write, get a script from somebody else. Everyone, every director has it. Some directors love every piece of it. I think I love everything except the writing process. It's painful. It's, it's rough. It's like trying to figure it all out and, you know, and, and make it mean something and paint pictures just with words. And I have a lot of respect for novelists and people who love screenplays just because I, I don't love writing them. So um, luckily, you know, my first three films were already written before I made my first film. So my next film, In the Middle of Nowhere, and I Will Follow, those scripts were already written. And I wrote them during the time when I couldn't get money to make films. But I could write. No one could stop me from, from typing and, and writing. And, and so I was constantly writing screenplays before anyone would give me a chance to make them. Um. I like to write like poetry, you know, and, and I write a lot in my journal. Um, and so I found that sometimes that helps if I'm just writing or journaling as the character, you know, what comes out of that. Um, um, so just a little bit of, of everything, just kind of living as the character a lot. You know, if I go to the grocery store, you know, what does Ruby shop for at the grocery store? Um, so living as the character a little bit before we actually start shooting helps me a lot. I had never seen this kind of story told in this way before. Um, I know women who have significant others that have been in prison, um, and I've, I've just never seen this kind of story told. So when I read the script and I thought of the women that I knew, it was like, it made me want to go and ask them, well, what was your story? You know, so that's really what excited me about it. And then the fact that there was this, this role for, um, for a woman who has this full and complete journey, you know, she becomes a different person, that also doesn't happen a lot. So those two things together at one time, it just made me feel like, you know, I would love to be a, a part of this. Yeah. See, the thing with Ruby is that was never the plan, you know, it was, okay, I'm going to take a semester off just to get things in order, to be home when you call, you know, that was the plan. Um, and so it ended up being, here we are four years later, and why? What happened? You know, did, didn't finish. So what, it was never that. Um, she wouldn't be that kind of woman to just say, okay, this, I'm just, this is it, I, I give up. You know, she never gave up in that sense. So that's how, for me, the, her journey really became um, kind of a, a discussion on what happens when all of a sudden you look up, you make a decision, and you look up and you see how did I get here? I'm in the middle of nowhere. How did that happen? So that was really what, what happened. It wasn't a conscious decision to, she never quit or gave up. I think I can. I could see myself giving up my dreams for someone that I love. Yeah. I mean, um, I think that some of what we explore in I Will Follow, if, if you've seen I Will Follow mm -hmm. it, you know, the makeup artist May, you know, puts her career on hold. You know, to take care of her aunt, we find ourselves in these situations where we have to make those kinds of decisions. Mm -hmm. And a lot of people are, you know, have gone through it or will go through it. And those are the crossroads where you find out what you're made of, I think. And the question that we ask in the middle of nowhere is when do you, how much is too much? Mm -hmm. You know, when does mm -hmm. it cross over into martyrdom? When does the sacrifice become um, harm, harmful to the person that's making the sacrifice? And so those are some of the things we explore in the in, in middle. Um, and I think, you know, the questions that we are going to have to face at some point. My advice is don't wait. There's nothing to wait for. There's nothing coming that's going to make it easier. You have to pick up the camera, you have to put your, your keys on the, your hands on the keyboard, and you have to start. 
you know, you have to begin. You know, whether that's a short or a video or a documentary or a feature is up to you, but you, you have to begin. I think my frustration is meeting folk who want to and are aspiring to, and there's a time for that. And you have to train and you have to study and you have to prepare yourself, but, you know, I, I prefer that time to be shorter. Uh, than other people. I was talking to our cinematographer, Bradford Young, who said, no, we need to have rigor. People need to study. People need to take more time. I'm from the school of pick up the camera and start, you know? And so different people have different thoughts about it, but for me, my advice would be, you know, um, time, time is short, life is short, things change. Find out if you even like this first. You know what I mean? Pick up a camera and start, you know, before you go to film school for four years and decide, uh, this is not really what I wanted to do. Right. Try it out first. And um, so yeah, that's my advice. What's yours? Um, my advice would be to, to keep going. I, w I would tell any actor to keep going. Sometimes it can just be daunting, you know, all the no's. You go through 20 no's before that 21st it's a yes, but all those 20, I mean, they hurt every single time, you know, and you, a little bit of you, you know, can be chipped away every time. So I would say just to keep going. Um, to trust in, in, in the gift that you have, the talent you have, and believe in it. And to just don't give up. You know, for me, it's, I've been, I'm from Jersey originally. Um, Army Brat lived all over the place. You know, and so for me, living in California, I've been out there 10 years now, you know, acting. And so to now have my chance to be a lead in, in a film, um, I had to just keep going, you know. So that's what I would say.